Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, excuse going? me, Hunter. Oh, Apparently, you're afraid of my words. Uh, here goes. <laughs> oh. I like to reclaim my time, Mr. Chairman. Wow, that's too bad. <laughs> I think it's clear and obvious for everyone watching this hearing today that Hunter Biden is terrified of strong conservative Republican women because he can't even face my words as I was about to speak to him. What a coward. And that was House Oversight Committee member, Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene, calling out Hunter Biden in person during a hearing on holding the first son in contempt of Congress, that for not showing up for the closed-door deposition last month. Hunter, along with attorneys Abby Lowell and Hollywood lawyer Kevin Morris, instead showed up unannounced at the hearing on Wednesday, sitting in the gallery with the audience, listening to some of the proceedings before quickly leaving. With the House set to vote on whether to hold Hunter in contempt of Congress this week, Lowell appears to be changing his legal strategy, writing to House Republican leadership on Friday, quote, if you issue a new proper subpoena now that there is a duly authorized impeachment inquiry, Mr. Biden will comply for a hearing or deposition. We will accept such a subpoena on Mr. Biden's behalf. Joining me right now in this Sunday Morning Futures exclusive is Georgia Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene. Congresswoman, good to see you today. Thanks very much. How, were you surprised to see Hunter Biden in your hearing there? Tell us how that all went down. Yeah, I was absolutely shocked that he decided to show up that day and he looked like a child pitching a temper tantrum when he finally got caught and was going to, to be in trouble. And it was it was really telling when he left as soon as Chairman Comer recognized me to speak. You know, he sat there seemingly unfazed when Nancy Mace was chastising him. But I think he also knew what I was about to bring up. Uh, you see, I've been going after Hunter for violating the Mann Act, and that's trafficking women across state lines. And this is this is a very serious crime, and we have evidence of that on our oversight committee through our investigation. And I was going to bring that up, and I think he knew it. Um, another thing that w I found disturbing was his sugar daddy right there, Kevin Morris that seems to be bankrolling Hunter Biden and is also the top buyer of Hunter Biden's art that that we are beginning an investigation looking into his his art because it seems like he's doing the same business he's been doing which is selling out his daddy's power um, and selling out Joe Biden's political favors and influence and that's a serious concern of ours on oversight uh, Maria I think it told everyone who Hunter did not want to hear from and and that was me uh, do you think he is still influence peddling? I mean, you and your colleagues have, have used some pretty powerful words to describe what has gone on here with the Biden family, and I, that includes money laundering, bribery, influence peddling, all terms that you and your colleagues have used. Um, what is the most important or most damning evidence that you see in that regard? Well, I think the most damning evidence that we have are literally checks written directly to Joe Biden. And we've traced that money. You know, when you follow the money, it, it proves exactly where it comes from. And we've traced that money, and it comes through LLCs, and it comes directly from China. And that is something that should concern every single American. That is a complete, uh, uh, unbelievable amount of corruption and breaking the law. Uh, we have serious evidence, and the Democrats don't want to admit it. You know, they pitch fits and temper tantrums and claim that we don't have evidence. But the reason why they're doing that is because they're looking at the same evidence that we have with Jamie Raskin and other Democrats on the committee. They know what we're in possession of. They could only dream of having this kind of evidence against President Trump and his family, and they were never able to produce it because all of their attacks were lies against President Trump and his family. But the Bidens are absolutely guilty, Maria, and we have the proof. Well, so far, the only person who's been able to interview Hunter Biden is our own Hillary Vaughn, and she caught up with him in the Capitol this week. Let's play that, and I want to get your reaction. Watch it. Mr. Biden, why did you put your dad on speakerphone with your business partners if he had no involvement in your business? Do you have a dad? Did he call you? Yes. Did he answer the phone? Yes. Okay. But why did you need to talk to him during business meetings if he had nothing to do with your business? 
Your thoughts, Congresswoman? Uh, that's also evidence. I know that Jamie Comer has discussed the fact that Joe Biden was emailing Eric Schwerin, who is uh, Hunter, was Hunter Biden's partner, directly one-on-one -on -one, uh, emails just about the time when Joe Biden was going to travel to Ukraine to get that prosecutor fired. That's right. Great job to Hillary. That's what real journalism looks like. Yeah, she right did a great there. job. That's right. She did. She did. Um, and, I, and I'm thankful to her for asking him those direct questions because most of the media covers up for the Bidens and wants to cover up for their lies and their corruption. However, Hillary did the right thing right there. Yes, we have evidence of this as well. Chairman Comer, our over, oversight staff, Republicans on oversight, have all been on top of this. And the fact that Joe Biden would call his dad on the phone and his business meetings and deals shows that he was selling his father's influence, bragging about who his father is and, and was and, and wants to prove to these people that he's trying to get money from, that he can produce his father on the phone at any time. All he has to do is pick up the cell phone and call up his dad, and they yeah. are right there at his beck and call. So what about this new deal that Abby Lowell is talking about? He says if you issue a proper, uh, uh, proper subpoena, he will sit for a deposition. When would you expect that? <laughs> well, we actually issued a proper subpoena in the first place, and uh, the Abby Lowell and the rest of the attorneys who had been talking to our oversight committee, they set up a date for Hunter Biden to come in for a deposition. And, and they, you know, they sat right there with him and helped him evade his subpoena. So we're moving forward. Um, we'll be looking and talking with his attorneys um, and, and Chairman Comer and the rest of the Republicans are talking about possibly issuing another subpoena. So we'll see how it goes. All right, let me get your take on this spending uh, conversation taking place over the weekend. We just heard from Senator Mike Lee. He doesn't have any text yet in terms of a spending deal. Mm -hmm. You said you were willing to go to the mat and vacate the chair, fire House Speaker Mike Johnson, if, in fact, he agreed to another continuing resolution. Where are you on this? No, I, I said that if he made that border deal, where if he, if he passes that Senate border deal or so-called border deal, it's really an amnesty deal where Democrats are going to bring in millions and millions of illegals and turn them into Democrat voters. That's their plan, is to replace Americans with millions and millions of illegal aliens. And it upset me so much that this is the deal that Republicans and the Senate are making, and they want to do this in exchange for $60 billion more dollars for Ukraine. Maria, our, our country's broke. We're like a corporation on the verge of bankruptcy with, with $34 trillion in debt. The border crisis is, is a national security crisis that has Americans everywhere. It doesn't matter how they vote. Americans everywhere are sick and tired and fed up with it. And we could talk about the numbers and we could talk about all the things that produce daily outrage. But the real situation here is if the Republican Speaker of the House and any Republican or really anyone elected to serve in the United States Congress should be supporting, protecting America's national security interests, and they mm. would never vote for that deal. And that's why I told Speaker Johnson, if he made that deal in exchange for $60 billion for Ukraine, I would vacate the chair, and I still stand by those words. Well, he seems to be throwing cold water on the Lankford deal, but is this the best that your Senate Republican colleagues could come up with? The fact that one of the items in this says expulsion authority for a limited number of days only if border encounters exceed 5,000 a day over a seven-day period. So we're supposed to let in 5,000 illegal migrants before you even think about sending anybody back. That's right, Marianne. And when you total that up, 365 days of the year, that adds up to 1.8 million illegal aliens that this Senate so-called border deal would let into the country. Uh, the problem in the Senate is the leadership. It comes from Mitch McConnell and those that, are, that hold the power over there. They've been the best, best possible senators for Joe Biden that you could ever expect to see out there. And I'm, I'm proud that Mike Lee and others in the Senate, Tommy Tuberville, J.D. Vance and others are saying there is no way they would ever vote for this thing. So I hope they stand strong over there. And we in the House 
we aren't going for it. And if any of our Republican colleagues want to cross the line and sign a discharge petition and vote with the Democrats on that, well, good luck in their primary elections mm. and good luck getting reelected. Well, some of them over there in the Senate leadership are actually Trump haters, right? Uh, you know, now Trump That's is right. leading uh, the, the largest lead in, in the Des Moines Register history this morning ahead of the Iowa caucuses tomorrow night. I'm going out there tonight. It's going to be really cold, and we're going to do everything we can to produce a huge victory for President Trump in Iowa. And I think All we'll right. see it happen. Congressman, good to see you this morning. Thanks very much. We'll, of course, Thank be you. watching. Thank you. Marjorie Taylor Greene this morning. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.